Broadcasting by way of Gallifrey. Stand by for podcast. This is Voices from the Vortex. Voices from the Vortex Reviews, Series 8, Episode 10, In the Forest of the Night. In the forest of the night, I'll be looking at some trees. With a wolf on my heels, <laughs> and a tiger, please! <laughs> oh, hey everybody, welcome. Hi! Hey. This is the incredible Voices from the Vortex, as we review, <laughs> uh, continue our reviews of Series 8, and um, I have no tree puns to open this one up with, so... <laughs> Phew. Woo! <laughs> it's been a rough season for puns. <laughs> yes, it has. Uh, I'm Taylor. And I am Matthew. And if you listen to this show, you know that we love Doctor Who, and we're going to review this episode today. So much. So much. This is In the Forest of the Night, written by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Yes. Uh, very exciting, oh. very exciting episode. Frank Cottrell Boyce. <laughs> With a hyphen <laughs> of doom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... What did you think of this episode, Matt? Uh, you know what? I think this actually was a really good episode. Um, we All season, we've been leading up to more and more uh, Clara and, and who she is and what's going on with her and the Doctor and how she's changing, how the Doctor's changing. And this episode was just such a great entry right before the finale, I felt. Um, however, I, that, that, that might be a different opinion <laughs> than uh, my, my fellow podcaster has. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I really did enjoy um, some of those moments, and, and these moments we're going to talk about. Um, obviously, I want to talk about the moments I enjoyed, <laughs> not the ones I didn't. But however, as those a Those are the ones I want to talk about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> as a whole, I, this episode was just, it was really slow for me. I don't know what it was. It was... I feel like a lot didn't happen. There was the whole thing and, and with the trees, and they saved the earth, and that was great. I enjoyed once they got to the end and they got to where they were going with it. I feel like it took forever to get there. No, it took it exactly fifty minutes, like every other episode. <laughs> for, oh my god, it seemed like forever. Five minutes. <laughs> plenty happened in this episode, though. That's the thing I don't understand. Well, I just feel like they stalled a lot. There was a lot of like. Like, no. all right, we're, we're walking through. There was a lot of walking through the woods, and then there's, no. some, oh, we've got to fill, like, ten minutes. We'll throw some wolves in there. Taylor, those weren't, that wasn't stalling. That was what we call plot. <laughs> no. Things were happening. No. Oh, trees are everywhere. We have to investigate. And, oh, look, a girl's gone missing. we got to search for her. Uh-oh, wolves are going to get us, and maybe even a tiger. Was... And then and then it was, oh, now we know it's the end of the earth, and now we got to go to the TARDIS. And, but it was, like, it was it was the story. It was it just wasn't, it wasn't action-packed. I, I guess, I, I just feel like, like in between when Maeve got back to, with the group of kids and they, they found everybody, uh, or well, no, when when they knew that when Clara and the Doctor got together, from that point to when Maeve like spoke with the little mm-hmm. the little fireflies or mm-hmm. whatever and spoke to the Doctor, but from that there to there, I was bored. I was like. I was like, let's get to it. Come on. What, did you need a Dalek to come out of the rush? I needed like, something. We are going to exterminate <laughs> the forest. I needed something. The wolves and the tiger and everything. I was just like, eh. But see, I thought that was I thought that was a great part of this episode. I thought that was what made this episode so great was that it wasn't it wasn't running around fighting a villain, monsters everywhere. It was mystery. It was curiosity. It was what next might we find in the forest? Because that there's a there's a tension there. There's a fear to the forest, right. and, and a part of that is yeah. Oh, the wolves are there. Yeah, why are wolves in London? Because of the zoo. Holy crap, we might get eaten by wolves. Um, and you know, then there was a tiger, and you're like, holy, <laughs> I pooped my pants. <laughs> well, and, and maybe this has to do with the fact that that we love this show so much that we we, we watch the previews and we we read the synopsis and we we know almost almost right. everything about the episode, um, except for of course like the big twist or what the big you know sure. thing is. Sure. Um, so it's like, yeah, I knew there were going to be wolves from the zoo, like, I, and I knew there was going to be a tiger. I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. and. Um, and you know, I just but you <laughs> didn't know 
You didn't know that the tiger was going to be beaten by a flashlight. <laughs> no, I did not know that. Though they gave you plenty of hints <laughs> at the beginning with a, I, I have a note from my doctor, I should have a torch. You need a torch, not a blind spot <laughs> device. <laughs> I don't know what he said, but he was all like condescending to the kid. Like, yeah. I'll take this, you stupid little... <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing, too, is maybe I'm just incredibly intelligent, but, but I feel like I figured it out like way early. Like, I, I feel like Danny was looking at the books, and there was the tree with the sun, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, well, obviously Maeve is really important to this story. And, and then it took them forever to get to the point where, like, then they found Maeve, and and then they also filled it with this other story that I wasn't a fan, a fan of, of Maeve's missing sister, and the mother who was looking for her. And, I, I mean, it just, like, it, it seemed... I don't know. I feel like the pacing was off, in my opinion. I, and I don't. And I don't think this episode was necessarily written for us. This episode was written for kids. You know, we we always talk about this being a children's program and how it's not really written for children anymore. How we're more invested in it. But it's like Stephen Moffat wants to write these fairy tale like esque episodes. Mm-hmm. And I think they're really for kids who haven't experienced this level of writing before. They haven't seen. You know, a story where, okay, there's all these different elements happening, plus the girl's missing sister and the mom's looking for her. I think all that builds tension if you've never participated, if you've never seen things like this. Right. So maybe maybe the episode isn't specifically written for us as much as it's written for what people. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm just what saying. What are you talking we're, about? We've, we've, we've seen quite a bit. Yeah. Not just of Doctor Who, but of all things. <laughs> all things we've watched television. a lot. Man, it's... <laughs> Like, we saw a dude shoot a polar bear on an island, and it's like, eh, at this point in time, nothing really, yeah, yeah. nothing really scares us anymore. So, yeah. Smoke monster. So, yeah, I mean, that's how I felt about this episode. But but I didn't hate it. No, not at all. I it, I thought it was enjoyable. I think, I think we've really, this whole second half of the season has been very enjoyable. I think, you know, we've talked about it. As soon as Listen happened, it just took off. Yeah. And this whole season has yeah. really kind of felt right um, mm-hmm. and it, it struggled from the beginning, and then we just sort of hit it, hit the ground running, and it's it's been really good. Um, you, you're right; the episode was a little slow. I think there's a lot more tension, a lot more drama to it, and, I, and that's okay. I, sometimes you need a slower episode. We just came off of a very tense episode that was very fast paced. That probably didn't need to be flatline. Was a great adventure and mm-hmm. a lot of scary bits to it. Yeah, but it, it wasn't slow by any means. So they were they were hitting every single beat as it should. Well, and this one had a lot of comedy in it too, like with the comedy. kids and stuff. That you know, that that's part of it too. So it was the pace was the pace was slower as far as the plot and the action were were concerned. But as far as the the kids and the dialogue and all that, I loved it. I thought it was funny and, and it was great. One of the, one of the well, you're anyway, right and. This, this episode definitely falls under the category of the dark fairy tale. And this is what Stephen Moffat's been talking about, about building towards uh, in all these episodes. And he did it with Matt Smith. The idea that all these episodes were sort of that fairy tale-esque. That it's, not, it's not happening in real time. It's not today, tomorrow, the next day, yeah. and that's three episodes. It's more sort of the, look at the story and look at where it is. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, think, I think the story falls under that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Very Red Riding Hood. Very... <laughs> yeah. I'm. Su- you know, I'm surprised... Well, they did make a reference. The Doctor called Clara Red Riding Hood or something. Right. Yeah. But, uh... And, and that was... That was really interesting. Um, all those parallels with those dark stories. And, and they even talked about Hansel and Gretel at one point. Right. Finding the crow... The lead, following the crumbs to the gingerbread house with the cannibalistic witch and stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, well, and, you know, this episode was very magical. The ending is very magical. Mm-hmm. You know, the Earth... Um, the Earth grows this forest overnight to prevent a catastrophe that's about to happen. Yeah. And the idea that everyone's going to forget because it was magical. Everyone's going to forget because we don't remember that. Um, and, you know, the the, the, the the creatures that exist on this Earth that have been here before us and will be here after us, that they were the ones doing this and communicating yeah. with Maeve, the little girl. That's all very... That's all very fairy tale ask. Well, and, and that's interesting you, you bring up the point of we're all not going to remember it because the Doctor has that whole part at the end where he says you won't remember the, the details, you just remember how you felt. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's really interesting because we've talked a lot about uh, Russell T. Davies had that whole era where stuff kept happening on Earth mm-hmm. and it was huge stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Earth gets moved to the Medusa Cascade like a whole right. huge thing and, the, and then they fly the ship back. Like, how are people not going to remember these things? Right. And we thought, well, maybe there's this whole, you know, retcon with the Big Bang too and stuff. And we decided, yeah, well, maybe not. But but the doctor brings up a good point. People 
it, this stuff really maybe still did happen, but it's not talked about because that's not that's not what they remember. They remember how they felt during it and, and what was going on. And, right. Well, yeah. and that's I mean, that 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 feeds in with um, with Russell T Davies. It, you know, for especially seasons one, two, and three, all this crazy stuff happens, but the, suddenly there's this. There's this reason why people forget, you know, they, they don't believe that people all over the earth stood up on the ledges of buildings, you know, and were about to jump. They don't believe that an alien ship crashed in London. Mm-hmm. They don't believe, you know, and it's it's because we have this plausible deniability. Well, that never has never happened before, so that could never possibly happen. That's, that's silly, that's the news, that's the government, it doesn't matter. And then when, you're right, when you get to season four, when you when you start getting to, like... The whole planet is just pulled to the Medusa Cascade, and it comes back, and people can say, well, maybe everyone just had an epileptic seizure, and, <laughs> or everyone suddenly lost the ability to think clearly. Everyone was high on pot. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> you know, it just... Or Mr. Smith messed with the Wi-Fi. Mr. Smith yeah. messed with the Wi-Fi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, the idea is that people could forget easily. And maybe that's just our, our natural state is that we forget. Mm-hmm. Which he, And he says it at the end. It's right. It's because if we did, we'd never. no one would ever have any brothers or sisters. Yeah. You'd have one kid, you'd be done with it if you really remembered giving birth. It's terrible. Right. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, maybe maybe that's a good point is that it's almost fairy tale esque And that's yeah. where the stories come from. Well, I don't know about you, but I will never forget the day I was turned into the master. <laughs> I I have forgotten that. I, I don't remember that at all, actually. It's good. I'm, I remember a lot of laughing in my head. Yeah. This terrible face. Terrible nightmares. <laughs> it's like this has happened before. Um, oh, no! I did I did like, though, the, 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 the solution to this episode was that the Earth saved itself. Yes. Um, the Earth knew what was coming, prepared for it, did this thing which just frightened us as a people, uh-huh. as, as humans, species. And then they're fireproof. You know, you can't... Because it could control they, the oxygen. They tried to burn them down, and you couldn't burn them down, and it was like, it was like, oh, geez, now, you know, okay, so some trees grew, but now we can't even get rid of them. You know, right. what's going to happen? Right. Well, and I, li- I like that. That was the only thing, and here's a part of the, the story where it starts falling apart. So they get the girl, Maeve, they get her to talk to the world. Mm-hmm. Tell the world, hey, everything's okay. Don't worry about it. Really? Like, people are going to listen to a random voice that calls them? Yeah, that was really interesting. You know, you're the, you're the president of the United States, you're, you're the chief of the NSA, and you get a phone call from a little girl saying, oh, don't worry, I know there's trees everywhere, it'll be fine, it'll be cool, don't do anything, I'm well, British. Like, you're going to do <laughs> you're gonna do nothing? Oh, and uh, uh, if you're my sister, please come home, I love you. Yeah. And bring some chocolates, because <laughs> I'm really in the mood <laughs> for a Snickers bar. Like, who's going to listen to that? I don't know. I mean, I, you know what, I was even okay with her doing that, but I wasn't okay with the kids writing the thing. I was like, oh, I sure hope the doctor... Uh, reviewed that before they sent it out. There were two <laughs> other teachers in the TARDIS with them. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the spelling and grammar was looked at. I'm sure there was some editing. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I know, but that's why I, I, stuff like that, when I see that, and then I look at the episode as a whole, that's why I think the episode was written for kids. Because this was, you know, the kids save Definitely. the day. Yeah. The kids figure it out. The kids have to trust in the adults who are trying to do whatever it is they're doing, and they have to trust the doctor who has no idea what to do, and even when they try try to get rid of the doctor, the doctor stays and says, no, 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 wait, 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 I think we can figure this out, but the kids have to figure it out. Yeah. I like that. That was, was yeah, that was good. Um, so, and that was interesting too, when she talked to the earth, uh, or well, they, they called themselves, we are the life that prevails, you know, like what were those things? We never really got a clear explanation in in my opinion. Um, was it just sort of the life force of the Earth was it sort of Mother Nature? Was it the uh, was it the life Gaia? forces of the trees? Yeah, I mean, that was a really they were the doozers. It was a <laughs> they build things. Yes, <laughs> we like um, it was a really interesting concept, a really interesting idea. I just wish they had gone maybe like they could have gone maybe a little more into that. That might have been more yeah. more of the. I would have been maybe more interested because um, I was really interested when they got to that part and, and the doctor sort of got them to show up and she was speaking through them or they were speaking through her I was like oh this is getting good you know, so I yeah and that was a, that was a cute, really interesting new creature to introduce and I the idea that the earth I mean it's it's you know, the earth saved itself yeah but these things whatever it was because because they learned how to communicate with them they could sort of see them and talk to them and you're right there it's sort of like the lifeblood of the earth it's the energy it's it's the earth itself talking to the doctor saying no, we got this, G. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. <laughs> we got this. You're good. It's all good. 
Love you. Now leave us alone. Oh, <laughs> I did it. Well yes. done. Uh, First pun of the podcast. All right. <laughs> 22 points. Um, all right. So one of the big themes of this episode is, um, is Clara and sort of her relationship with Danny and then also how she sort of becomes the doctor at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I really love the moment at the end, near the end, where she um, was sort of... She tricked him to getting to the TARDIS. She was like, oh, we'll save the kids and everything. Mm-hmm. And then she sort of well, it's, it's like, well, you know, the kids are going to want their moms. And, and you know, Danny's going to want to look after these kids. And he's like, okay, well, then you. And she's like, no, I'm good. You, you get in the TARDIS. <laughs> I mean, that was really sweet. That was really um, sweet. And basically, you know, Clara saves the doctor. And, but yeah, yes, she does very much so. And this this has been following the the building of Clara into the Doctor. She's becoming more and more and more like him. We saw it last episode. She was a she was a she was a great Doctor. She, there's nothing good about it, you know. And then the episode before that, where she she realized maybe I have you know Mummy on the Orient Express. She had to make a a tough choice like the Doctor does, which is sort of leading her down that path. Yeah. So we've gotten to the point where she, I mean, right away she is. The doctor. Mm-hmm. She's not even. She's not even a good teacher anymore. No, she she's not. <laughs> she's willing to make those choices. The doctor does. So she gets back, and Danny's like, "Oh, you called the parents?" And she's like, "Yeah, the parents, right?" I mean, she's not. She's forgotten all about the kids. She instantly goes right to the doctor, down into doctor mode, you know. And she she even calls him and says, "Hey, I want to show you something amazing," you know. Yeah. And that's that's what the doctor would do. Like, hey, you want to see something cool? Yeah. So very much so. Uh, yes, I think Clara has become the Doctor, and you're right. This episode really kind of kind of solidifies that. And their her relationship with Danny, Danny, and I, Danny is just an amazing guy because he, he tells her he's like, "Look, I know you've been lying to me, so I figured it out. I'm not stupid. Just stop lying to me. Just yeah. tell me." He's like, "I don't even care what the truth is. Right. I just, I just want to know it. I just like want to know it's the truth." Yeah. And uh, she even has that uh, that moment where she's going to tell him, and he's like, "No, no, no." Think about it, and then tell me. You know, it's, I mean, boyfriend of the year right there, man. Right. <laughs> you know. God, it's going to suck so much when he dies. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the last thing I really wanted to talk about with this episode um, is we were introduced to a brand new group. And uh, any kid from the 80s will know this group well, for they are <laughs> Cobra! Yes. Yes, Cobra. Go, Destro! Rule that world! I almost wonder if this is a sort of Russell T. Davies kind of, like, drop, drop in hint. You know, maybe this, something... Because I've never heard of this before on Doctor Who. This, this, this is a brand a new, new group. Yeah, a new group. It was a... Government uh, organization mm-hmm. bent on cleaning up crazy things. It was a government emergency organization. There is it is. what the guy called it. And uh, just, yeah, sent to clean up the trees. And, and the, I assume they were the guys in the suits. The hazmat suits, with yeah. The, uh, with well, the flamethrowers, but... Maybe this leads into the finale, or maybe this is a seed planted for next year, or even Series 10. Maybe. Uh, Moffat was planting seeds for three years uh, for his Trenzalore yeah. epic. So yeah. maybe this is stuff we're going to start seeing. Maybe this is the beginning of, and then next year we start seeing a lot more of it. And then Season 10, they are... What replaces unit? Maybe, maybe. Or, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah, um, just one of those fun things to, to mention. Um, one of the things I really did love about this episode was the continuity of sort of of this season. It's sort of uh, they called back to several episodes in this season. Uh, one was just a quick one was time heist. You mentioned the, the solar flare. Mm-hmm. You know that kind of that was a nice little comeback around. Mm-hmm. But then also um, the line at the end where it killed the moon. Um, where he says, you know, I, I walk your earth, I breathe your air, mm-hmm. you know, no, it's, I'm going to help. And, uh, I thought that was, that was great because he, he learned something. <laughs> well, and it's, it's, it's good for us. This is admittance for us. This whole season, we own it. You know, I, I know I have, and I think both of us have struggled and everyone's struggled with believing the doctor to be the doctor. It's, mm-hmm. we, we don't see him as the doctor. Because he's not Matt Smith, he's not David Tennant, he's so cold and so distant. And while they're giving us some explanation as to why, I feel like there still needed to be an admittance that, yes, he does love the Earth, and he loves humanity. And we have not seen that. Um, And I I know the stuff with Kill the Moon was a little different, because he was putting Clara to the test and everything, but still, that he would, at any point in time, not be involved in saving the Earth. 
So, yeah, you're right. When he says, I walk this earth, I breathe this air, and he tells that to Clara because he's trying to prove to her, yes, I heard you, and now I'm here doing this. Mm -hmm. You know? And that was a great, not just a great callback, but that shows that the Doctor really is still the Doctor. It took us this long. Yeah. To get there. It took all season to believe that this was the Doctor. And, um... I'm happy for it. Yeah. I have to say, I really did enjoy Capaldi's performance in this Mm -hmm. and uh, as the doctor. And there wasn't, there wasn't really a moment in this where I was like, oh, that's not very doctory. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there were, there's several moments in past episodes this season where I'm like, the doctor wouldn't do that. You know, that's kind of a little out of character, but this one, I didn't, I didn't catch any, anything like that in any of it. No, he, he was very much so the Doctor. And just like every... So many other episodes written this season could have been anyone playing him. Mm-hmm. I could see Matt Smith doing this episode. Yep. I could see David Tennant doing this episode. I yep. could see Eccleston doing it. Hell, I could see Colin Baker doing this episode. <laughs> though he probably wouldn't fit into the outfit anymore. Mm-hmm. I could see him doing it. <laughs> Zing. Um, poor Colin Baker. <laughs> <laughs> more of me! <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh. oh no, that was terrible. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> um, all right. So there are I, 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 there are a lot of good quotes from this episode. Yes, seriously. This one had some some really funny ones. Um, one of my favorites was just <laughs> the part where he's in the TARDIS and he leaves to go find Maeve. Which, first of all, Maeve, kind of name is Maeve. That just, right. That took me out of it a little bit. Come on, British like, people. Maeve, come on. Get your game up. <laughs> Get your head in the game. But anyway, he leaves. To, he leaves with Claire to go find Maeve, and um, and he tells the kids, he's like, "Don't touch anything, nothing at all." You hear me? And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> I just felt that 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 okay. That was so great. I just loved that. It made me laugh. <laughs> uh, I really liked the very beginning when the Maeve goes to the TARDIS. And says, "I'm here to here to see the doctor." He says, "You need an appointment to see the doctor." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shuts the door on her. <laughs> What? You're not gonna get to see the wizard? No way, no how. Not nobody, not no how. <laughs> uh, I really loved. Uh, at one point in time, they talked about it being a new forest. This is a brand new forest. It's like the new forest, only newer. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, or uh, one of my other favorites. Uh, this is how a planet grows: a series of catastrophes. Yeah. God, if that's not true. Yeah. Uh, it goes on about the ice age, which is really neat. Yeah, and he called this the tree age. The tree <laughs> age. I liked that. That was good. Um, I liked Danny's line, too, when uh, one of the kids was like, uh, you, you're not leaving? You're supposed to be madly in love with her. And he goes, oh, yeah. I, wait, who said that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> who told you that? You know, that was so great. Uh, let's see. There's no such thing as an arboreal coincidence. That killed me. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think the line from the episode, the winning line... Goes to one of the kids, the the one that was the bully. Um, yeah, and he says, "This is this is stressing me out. When uh, when I get stressed, I forget my anger management." <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so true for kids. Yeah, like, yeah. It's the things they have to go through. One of the interesting thing with the kids, which I thought they would go into, but they didn't. I guess it was just sort of something that was happening. Was the kids seemed to be um, being out of character. Like, they mentioned, like, oh, Bradley said please, and mm-hmm. oh, the one kid, you know, he's been, or, or the one girl, she's she's sort of been more imaginative lately mm-hmm. than she has in class and stuff like that. And I was wondering if that was maybe had something to do with the trees, but then they never, you know, I was thinking maybe it was, like, some, some abilities of, like, children had been enhanced or something. But then they never went into it, so it turned out to be Well, nothing. and you can kind of imply, you know, whenever people are with the doctor, they're sort of the best and worst versions of themselves. Yeah. They change a lot, and they and, and whatever their personality normally is, they find themselves doing other things following the doctor. The kids were around Clara the whole time. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's Clara was inspiring them to be something more because she was be, being like the doctor. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's a part of it. Or maybe it was just of her little details about kids and they just want to throw it in there so yeah. it didn't seem as well, boring to some people. <laughs> I'm sorry. God, without those kids' lives <laughs> and just standing around doing nothing. <laughs> Never mind the fact that a giant forest grew overnight across the earth. Um, one of my favorite things about this episode and Matt and I both have children and I don't know if, if, you, if you guys out there watch this, have ever watched this show and Matt, I don't know if you've seen it either but there's a show called Peppa Pig um, about a little British pig and her family. Mm-hmm. The child Ruby uh, is the voice of Peppa Pig 
So that's all I could picture when she was talking. <laughs> she was like, oh no, Maeve's lost in the forest. Maeve's going to die. I was like, this is the, this is the darkest episode of Peppa Pig I've ever seen. <laughs> it was great. I have not seen Peppa Pig. Oh my God. It was, but I'm going to watch it now. Oh my God, you have to. You'll recognize the voice immediately. It was that's just, awesome. Yeah, and, and I had heard something about that before they had, this episode had come out, and I and I'd totally forgotten. So then when I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, it's totally Peppa Pig. <laughs> Uh, the last thing I think we we have for this episode, the, the most important thing is, why was Missy in this episode? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Aside from the fact that we've proven that she is a creepy stalker by just watching <laughs> everything Claire and the Doctor does. Yeah. Um, wait, wait, what, what's the... Wait, I mean, I get that we're, we're getting ready for the finale. I get that right, she's right. in the finale. I get that she's the reason we're doing all this. Why is she watching this? Why is she watching the Doctor? Why is this the, an important piece for her? And I'm I'm really worried that all these little hints and these things that they've been showing us, that there's something more sinister going on with it underneath the covers here. Well, this one was totally out of nowhere. I mean, the others had to do with the people dying. Like, that made sense. Like, it was it was a pattern, right? Yeah. I mean, we understood. There was a pattern of somebody died and then they, they went to, quote, heaven and she was there. And we're like, okay, what's that about? And then we get to this, we get to the one before this. And we find out a big thing, like, oh, Clara, it, this has something to do with Clara. Clara's been chosen for something by her. Okay, that's fine. This one, there was, like, no reason for her to be there. She just watched it and went, hmm, that was surprising. Mm. I love surprises. And that was <laughs> it. There was, like, it, it made no sense. You could have cut the whole thing out and it would have been fine. Maybe she's the one that caused the uh Maybe. I mean, and that's a, if she caused the solar flare or she... She, and this is another big thing too. Is that I think I really do think she's she's from Gallifrey. And she's a Time Lord or something. Because for it to be surprising for her would be that she would know that this was some event in time that was supposed to happen or something, and yet it changed or it didn't or something. That could happened. be. So like like that's that's an idea. But otherwise, right. it, so I'm going to play devil's know. advocate by being the internet. Ready? Okay, go ahead, internet. That is because. Missy is actually secretly the Rennie versus it, she is the Valyard. No, she's actually the Master in woman form dating the Doctor. She is Jenny, his long lost daughter, who's been traveling the universe and died and came back during the Big Bang 2. She is, in fact, Clara. No, she's the TARDIS. She is Rassilon Omega Rani Romana K9 Leela. Uh, Captain Jack River Song <laughs> Tardis Clara Doctor Who Alternate Universe with Rose DNA. Canine. <laughs> no, no, that's ridiculous. Oh, okay. I'm She's sorry. not the canine. I'm sorry, I had a I had a thought. <laughs> so Taylor, final thoughts on the episode. Um, all right. So the episode was good. I did enjoy it. There were a lot of funny parts. The episode made me laugh. There were just some. Parts that I thought was a little bit too slow. It, it could have moved a little bit faster for me. So I give this episode five out of ten. Excellent. I thought this was one of the highlights of the season. Loved, uh, loved, loved, loved that it was a dark, a dark fairy tale. I thought it was funny. I thought it was interesting. I thought the plot was really tense and 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 unique. Uh, so I'm actually going to give it a seven out of ten. Hardest. What does, uh, what do we give it? What's the final verdict? Calculating. Voices from the Vortex gives In the Forest of the Night, six out of ten. That brings us to... To... Wait, wait. wait. Oh my god, I, I feel it. I feel it in my bones. Oh my god, I feel it too. It's... I... My whole body is shaking, oh, man. Here, here it comes. Oh, yes. Here it comes. Oh my god, god that god. promo! Oh my god, the promo! Oh my god, the promo! Oh my god, the promo! It was so good. It was amazing. It was so good. Why wasn't this the level of promos all season? I don't know. I'm sorry, but look, every promo should make me go, uh, what? Right? Afterward. And this one did. Uh, this one made me go, what? And, and wake everybody up in the house. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. We've got 
the doctor, there's fire, there's Clara talking like she's crazy, lady. Yeah. You're never getting back in that box of yours. Uh, there's, uh, Clara's never existed. Oh my god, that's... John, John, what? John. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's Cybermen, there's the dead, there's, you know who I am, and the doctor going, uh... I do? Uh, <laughs> Oh, I know, it was so good. And, you know, and that's the thing. It's like these promos could have been like this all along. You know, you, you need you need the, the promos need the what? They need the, the hook. I feel like they haven't had that all season. There's no real no big hook. that be like, oh, you know, oh, I got to watch that. This one, I, you know, I got to watch it, obviously. For, Absolutely. But if I hadn't even watched this show before, if I'd seen a promo for this, I've never seen this show before. This would be like, oh, shit's going down. I'd be like, oh, I got to watch that show. That's, that looks awesome. This is it. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. All right. So what do we think is going to happen? This is, it's theory time. Um, <laughs> Rasala, Nomika, Ramana, Leela, Dr. Clara, <laughs> Jenny, <No>. Master, <laughs> Captain uh, Valier, or Captain Jack, <laughs> the alternate universe canine is clearly trying to use, destroy, <laughs> oh create, God. capture the earth for and or... Nefarious purpose. Oh my god, alternate universe K9. That's alternate, or whatever you said. That was the best. <laughs> it's all those in one, you see. It's. Uh, I am super psyched for I am super, I'm super so psyched for this. Too. Yeah, it's going to be oh, good. Man. Um, well, okay, so here's a couple things that I think may be. Uh, I don't really have a, a solid theory. Like, you had a theory last week. I don't really mm-hmm. have a like, solid theory. Yeah. But I have some, I have some thoughts. In the promo where she goes, Claire. Uh, Claire Oswald has never existed you know that made me go what but then um, as I watched it again I thought about it there's a Cyberman standing there and he's kind of got his gun to her so maybe she's just saying she's just talking trying to like reason with the you know the robotic side of him like maybe oh yeah. you, you can't kill me because I'm not Claire Oswald Claire Oswald never existed Something's, you know there's something going on there so that's that's my thought there um, here are two things I think may be addressed in in this episode um, because we, we really haven't gotten answers to them. Mm-hmm. The first is, how did Clara and the Doctor get out of the Doctor's time stream? They never really addressed that. And they never really addressed if they had any other, if there were any other problems that, or, like, you know, how did they get out? Or did that cause any issues or whatever? So mm-hmm. there may that may be, have something to do with it. The other thing I'm thinking, too, is... Um, there's a paradox, and this paradox has never been addressed. Stephen Moffat never really talked about this. We theorized, uh, you know, sure. what it is, but um, the Doctor did not die on Trenzalor. He was saved by the Time Lords. They gave him another regeneration right. cycle, you know, because of Clara, what Clara said to them. And so if he never died on Trenzalor, and, and that was supposed to be his tomb, that was supposed to be his, mm-hmm. his grave, you know, then... How did that actually happen? How did they go into his time stream? I mean, the Doctor, I don't know if he was lying, but he said, you know, that's just what happens when the Time Lord dies, this thing, right? So he should know. So they never actually talked about that. So that, again, that may be another thing that I think could be addressed, some sure. paradox with that, with the time, with her being in the time stream. Uh, that, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a huge, that's a, that's a good thought. That's uh, definitely something to... To, to meander over there. Um, the only thing I would say to that is they do give an explanation uh, that what's left behind is his time stream from his life. And uh, they say, and then the time stream specifically we know is his first regeneration cycle because when Clara goes in it, she only sees right. 11 faces, 11 doctors. Um, uh, he, When someone says, I thought I'd find a body, he says, you know, bodies are, well, I, bodies are temporary. I've had many. You know, that's not what was left behind. Mm -hmm. So when he regenerates on the clock tower, that could have been him leaving behind that time stream. Right. Becoming, you know, when he becomes the new version of himself, when he resets his face and gets ready to, you know, he could have left that time stream behind. That, you know, that's, we don't need to see it happen. We can believe it is. It did did happen. Right. It's hardest could end up there after everything is said and done. Sure. You know, that could be still his memorial. That could be the first doctor's memorial. You know, the first Mm -hmm. uh, version of all 12 of his regenerations. Um, Well, and and that's a great theory. 11. Well, that's a great theory by us. You know, I'm really proud of that theory (laughs) of ours. But... You know, they it hasn't been addressed on the show, so this might be a chance for them to well, to address it. And yeah, I, I I hope they don't. I hope they don't address something like that because it kind of leaves it really wide open. Yeah. You know, we are led to believe that the Doctor dies on Trenzalor, and maybe he does. 
I mean, everything the Doctor was is dead. Mm -hmm. He's a brand new man. Yeah. And even though he's 2,000 years old, we've seen it this season that Capaldi is different. Maybe they don't need to address it, or maybe they'll address it, you know, season's end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. There is there's definitely that. Um, I, I have a slightly different theory. Shoot. The last time we see River Song... Mm-hmm. She makes a couple references. There's a couple things said. He says that you should have faded by now. We, we know for a fact that she's in a computer system. Uh, and, he, and the doctor says, you should have faded by now. I know in the end my fault. Um, you know, we never he never found a way to let her go, I guess. But she says to him right before she fades away, she says, if, uh, if Claire is dead, you know, when I was mentally linked, how am I still here? And he goes, I don't know how. And she goes, spoilers. As if there's one last secret about mm-hmm. her connection with Clara. So perhaps that's that's the key. That's the thing we should be looking at. Is that, in fact, this heaven might just be the promised land, which we know robots were looking to get to anyway, mm-hmm. um, might just be a, a system, a program. Right. And Missy might be trying to become real. She might be River or some amalgamation of River mm-hmm. and whatever happened with that computer program on the library. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, because if you think it, it, that computer program, when they were in it, it was all sort of real light and shiny, and so was the, the little garden at the end of Deep Breath. It was kind of looked similar. So there, there's that too. So yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, I don't know if I'd want River to come back though. I mean, we've talked about how uh, right. her ending was kind of perfect, and it was kind of good. Well, and her her old yeah, the old her. Maybe this is a new version of her. Hmm. In a computer program, she gets corrupted, just like uh, the one girl was corrupted. She had to have the veil over her face. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is a darker version of River, uh, a version of her that's become crazy, and she's <laughs> trying to return to this universe to be with the Doctor. And uh, when she does, it'll be the Missy, the actress, and it could be other actresses, yeah. uh, because she is part-time Lord. Maybe this is her finally gone insane. That's my theory. I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, clearly, we've got another week. Clearly, yeah, we've, we've got another week, and, and, well, when this episode comes out, it'll be tomorrow. Um, but, yes. uh, you know, it's it, I'm sure it'll be nothing that we've said, because that usually ends up... Yeah, uh, you know, I feel like I'm pretty good at guessing what happens, but on Doctor Who, it's always something that I didn't think was gonna so true. was gonna happen, and, so and it does. Um, here's my thing: if Clara turns out to never have existed, and this whole time it's just been something else, I will be so mad because I like Clara, and I will be so sad. Um, <laughs> it will be Doctor Who's version of it was all just a dream. Yeah, and I, I will not be happy. Right. <laughs> so I hope that's not the case. <laughs> Maybe she's just... Maybe she's a projection. Maybe she is a vessel. Maybe. She existed, but only to a certain point, because one day she had to become something. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of vessels, my other theory, too, is that I, I, I'm pretty sure all of the dead people that that um, Missy has been collecting, they're now Cybermen. Like, that's my that's my thought. That's very possible. That's, that's what I'm thinking, too, on that one. So Yeah. Because what, why else would the Cybermen be there... You know, the, the, their story is always taking Unless a, the promised land is Mondas. Oh, maybe. Oh, because <laughs> there is a planet out there that is supposed to be. Yeah. So maybe it is Mondas out there. It's not. It wasn't destroyed by the first Doctor. Mm, maybe. And it's his greatest failure. That's another thing, too. Like, what do the Cybermen have to do with all this? There's kind of a... You know, is she a cyber? Jamboree. Is she a cyber? <laughs> Time to play the banjo. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Bring your partner, don't say no. It's a malate and turn them into cybermen. <laughs> <laughs> Delete your partner around and around. <laughs> uh, you know, is Missy, you know, is Missy, uh, she's obviously, it looks like she's in charge of the cybermen, but, you know, is she cyber controller or is she just using them or is this a whole cyberman plot or what is this so we'll see so we will see uh and keep in mind all of this is dependent based on the things that happen in this episode uh and it is not in fact branching out Aww, into some new, new areas <laughs> I ah, got one in there <laughs> So from both Taylor and Matt here at the Vortex, uh, this is Matt saying, go long and go climb a tree. And this is Taylor saying, make like a tree and get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) See ya. Bye, everybody.
Voices from the Vortex was written, edited by, and starring Matthew Whitecamp and Taylor Davidson. With Danielle Davidson as the sexy voice of the TARDIS. Theme music composed by Brian Wurst. Visit our website, www.broadcastgallifrey.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for an enhanced podcast experience. Follow us on Twitter, at Vortex Podcast. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Tumblr and Google+. Subscribe to us on iTunes, and if you like what you heard... Leave a review. Ask us a fan question through any of these media, and we'll answer it on the podcast. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned to The Vortex. End of transmission.